Good morning, I'm Leslie Stewart and you're watching Tara at Home and uh, today we decided to go along with staying indoors, kind of cozy thing since it is mid-January. So we are here at Goman's, the Stony Creek location and I'm here with Brett Wagner and uh, we're going to talk about making hot coffee drinks at home. A lot of people love being able to have that and accessibility to that is uh, sometimes cost you about four or five dollars each Absolutely. time you have one. So having one at home, especially if you're home for a snow day, could be a little bit uh, kind of a nice easy way of doing it. Absolutely. So there's a lot of different brands out there. There are a lot yes. of ones from very low price points to the extreme and we're going to show the best of the best of the best of the highest end built right into your kitchen. Correct. <laughs> And Just that would be cool. this one here, the mm -hmm. Mila. Uh huh. Now the Mila, if you don't mind, Leslie, I'll take you through the inside of it. I real think so. Quickly. It should be interesting to see this inside. Okay. Now this one here, this particular unit here, you have a couple of canisters here. This would be your water-containing unit. Okay. So basically, what you would do is you'd fill this up to the top, and it's self-containing. It just stays inside the actual unit itself. Mm -hmm. It's a whole bean unit, which means all your beans. You just take your beans, you drop them into the top up here and then it actually grinds all your beans contained inside the unit. Which is great. And just No mess, and you don't have to worry about doing it in advance either. So. Exactly. The nice thing, it, it actually disposes of everything for you, so you can continually use it over and over again. Okay. And it actually drops off under the side there. And the other nice unit is it has one of the largest drip trays. Whoa, okay. <laughs> in the industry. You'd think you're actually almost in a restaurant when by looking at the size of this. Absolutely. But again, everything's back in the wall, so really the front of it's so flush with your kitchen. Exactly, so you get this nice clean look right on the front of it right here in the front. The other nice thing about Milo, what they do with this particular unit, is they actually have all the pre-programming done inside of it that for helps you. too. <laughs> where you can move from an espresso to a coffee, mm -hmm to a cappuccino, into a latte macchiato. This particular unit contains your milk unit right here on the side. Okay. Refillable, very easy to use. So no hand steaming, you're not holding the steamer, you're not trying to create that itself, it doesn't. It's all done right. for you. Let me wow. give you, let me show you. Okay. This particular unit here is the Mila warming drawer. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's a convection. I want a warming drawer in my <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> it's a convection warming drawer, which means the entire coffee mug gets completely surrounded. It's a very quiet, whisper quiet unit. Okay. This is basically your espresso cup that you would have right here. Mm -hmm. Now, typically what happens at Christmas time, you have different types of cups. So you might have a Christmas cup that you might use, and then throughout the year, you might have a different cup that you also might right. use uh, come Easter, et cetera. You have different cups that you use. Mm -hmm. This unit here makes it very easy to program your particular cup. All you would do is basically hold it under here. Mm -hmm. You would hold down the unit. You'll hear it gr grinding the beans for you. Then at that point, it'll pressurize the beans and then fill up your cup. You're programming the amount so each and every single cup size that you have now is specific to you. Wow, that is amazing. So, I mean, we're looking at the, I mean, the ease of this. I mean, really, this is just, I mean, you've got this tiny little cup. It's been warmed in there. So you, now you're getting closer and closer to having gone and purchased this at a store, but mm -hmm. you can have four or five or six espresso shots in a row if you really want exactly. to. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I love it, I love it. Just so, like that. And again, what's great is if you are entertaining, having people over, you can just, you can just wrap these off one after another. Absolutely. From a latte to an espresso without really any big changes. Exactly. The size of the units on the inside that the amount of water it can hold mm -hmm. and the internal compartments of this, you can just do a unit after a coffee, a mm -hmm. latte, mm -hmm. an espresso, having it all pre-programmed. And that's the thing because those units are so big inside, you really have, you can store a lot of water and a lot of beans. Exactly. So you aren't changing that constantly. Exactly. Very cool. Okay. So with this being, of course, kind of the, the top of the top, you guys obviously carry here at Goman's many other varieties of machines. And you were mentioning that Mealy, Mealy now makes a, one that's a, a countertop. Absolutely. Okay. They do. The CM5 series. Okay. They, it's a countertop unit and as well, it does a lot of the same uh, that this particular unit does, mm -hmm. just miniaturized. Okay. Just like the other units that they use here so at So perhaps Coleman's a little well. bit more approachable for somebody in, a, you know, on a bit of a tighter budget, budget constraint. Absolutely. Right? But again, sometimes if you actually do the math on uh, on coffee makers and, and going out and purchasing your own coffee on a regular basis, especially an espresso made coffee, mm -hmm. it really does add up pretty quickly. So it kind of can be a very good investment to buy your own. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The cost savings on something like this, a bag of beans and a unit like this would mm -hmm. last much longer than going to uh, 
help for coffee on a regular basis. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. So obviously you can buy all the other units here, all the other different brands that are available yes. here at Goman's. Now, of course, we're mentioning we're at the Stony Creek location. Now we're in this massive showroom that I mean carries everything from the gamut. No, uh, you'll notice a little bit later on the show we'll be with Alex in the fireplace area, which of course has everything from traditional fireplaces to the most modern of all. But I mean, you guys carry a lot of other great items here for people, and Absolutely. particularly even in the melee line, right? Absolutely. So from uh, washers and dryers to washer dryers, we have steam ovens, we have speed ovens, they mm -hmm. have the warming drawers, induction cooktops, mm -hmm. uh, they have the dishwashers as well. Mm -hmm. They've been in business for 80 years building it, operating dishwashers. Mm -hmm. uh, works extremely well. Yeah. If so, you don't mind, can I show you a latte? Yeah, this let's one do a here? latte. Okay. I'll show you the milk unit on this one here and All how right. that one operates. That way we can see the, the steaming milk Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And again, too, that's how easy it is to do. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's what's easy because I find we, we have a, you know, a, a countertop version, um, some Italian name of some other one. I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, it takes a little bit of learning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of playing around and you're, I've kind of messed up the steamer a few times because there's little attachments and things like that where this one you don't really have to think about. Uh, after being a bartender for many years, to get the steam and the froth to yes. work exactly right coming out of that unit, you'll know, you putting know. it on top and then adding your cinnamon, uh -huh. you'll notice with this unit here, it does everything for you. Yes, okay. The espresso's being ground and pre-brewed and shot into the actual unit itself now. It, each one of these amounts are fully programmable inside the unit. So if you're a particular person that likes more milk mm -hmm. or Aunt Liza's over and she mm -hmm. wants a certain type of blend that she wants mm -hmm. in hers, you can make it exactly how whichever company So you can kind of just take the time and, and program it to the what, what you're used to doing. That's the thing because people have very specific coffees that they drink so you can program it to what you're used to doing on a regular basis. So you don't have to sit around and tweak it constantly. Right. So it added the milk first and then yep. it added the shots afterwards. And then added the shot afterwards, absolutely. Okay, so now what if I wanted to add chocolate to this at some point because oh, I like mochas. Absolutely. When do you do that? When do you at do that? At what stage do you add that? You can, Because it's got the milk inside mm -hmm. of it, you can actually put the chocolate into the actual unit first or you can just <laughs> melt it. As I well. love it. Yeah, it <laughs> works very, fantastic. Very and there you go. And there's Just the like coffee. So, and it's hot and it's good. And again, with the warming drawer, you have a nice warm cup. That's, That's very right. professional. So the you. coffee is not heating the cup. They hit each other yeah. and they're already at the same temperature. Exactly. Again, very important to coffee drinkers. I love it. Very good. All right, this is Brett Wagner. We're at Coleman's, and uh, again, uh, we are going to be talking throughout the rest of the show about being in warm and cozy for the day. We're going to be speaking to Alex Reynolds coming up in just a little bit. We're going to be sitting by the fireplace and talking about some of the top family movies. So anything, I mean, right from the classics way back in the day to the current stuff. And uh, also cooking some cozy meals. We're making a beef bourguignon a little bit later on with Chef Rachel. So again, it's gomans.com. We're at the Stony Creek location. Come down, have yourself a coffee. We'll be back with more Terra at Home right after this. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home and to go along with our kind of stay indoor cozy winter theme we're going to talk about movies today. I should tell you that we have this beautiful set provided by Gomans in Stony Creek, a great location for us to uh, have a nice cozy fireplace and our entertainment guru Alex Reynolds is with us here today to talk. Nice warm here. It is, it's warm. We're going to maybe kind of sweat a little bit during this segment but uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the great family movies. Again, also movies that you can watch on your own because that's one thing people can do. By yourself, with a partner, or with your family and some good classics. Um, you know Alex, again I do appreciate the fact that you you appreciate classic movies but also current movies. So right across the, the whole gamut really. And what's good about the technology for home viewing now? The big screens, the digital 
digital yes. outfit, even uh, the 3D effect. So now you've got a full effect there. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the movie houses themselves perhaps are suffering over Come that. Does. Absolutely. However, but in the middle of winter, it's lovely. I'm it's thinking perfect. about Slumdog Millionaire. This film came out three or four years ago, uh, zoomed from nowhere up to the very top as an independent film, which usually that doesn't usually happen right uh, about uh, a young lad uh, he's an orphan uh, living in the slums of Bombay and somehow gets picked uh, to appear on who wants to be a millionaire the Indian version but he goes through an he's very sharp and savvy and educated mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. his mind because he's got it all ready in there the subject matter but they refuse to believe that somebody from the slums could be that smart. Right. And so there's a certain amount of the, the police are on him, he gets arrested and that sort of thing. A lot of adventures in this movie and really a kind of a good movie, you know, for the whole family really, Uplifting. because you can learn a lot from That's this right. movie. And it also ex exposes North Americans to a world that we really aren't exposed to that often to appreciate what the slums really mean and what how they what they value there. Those scenes in the shanty town, it's hard Absolutely. for us to imagine being <sighs> existing in something like that. Yeah. So it was an uplifting film all the way around. So I thought a film like that, with everybody gathered around mm -hmm. watching, uh, yeah. even though there are some uh, depressing moments in it, sure. but still it's uplifting at the end. It's yeah. very optimistic. And one you so. can watch many times over oh, yes. again. That's, oh, yes. so that's a sign of a good movie right and there, good, too. And good performances as well, yeah. because there was a good script there, too, yes. all the way around. Absolutely. All right, that's a good one. Next. Marley and Me. Now, I bet you you cried in this one. <laughs> I know I had tears and whatnot. And, yeah, uh, it's a good cry movie. Marley and Me. Oh. That's a good one. Uh, the drawback to that film for me, I read the book and liked it very, very much, and it was about the world's worst dog, as, uh, right. as they referred to it. Uh, Owen Wilson, to me, was the weak point in this whole film, but we're not here to it's criticize that It's funny, I would have thought you would say thing. that, actually. I, uh, <laughs> I kind of agree with you on that. Jennifer Aniston, I thought, did very well. She's criticized a lot for a lot of films, but she I think is. she's quite a dandy little actress. Anyhow, mm -hmm. it was the dog here that stole the whole show, yeah. and of course, all of our emotions and whatnot. Do you know they used 21 different dogs? <gasps> So now, I've heard film. that when you're using an animal in a movie, often because yeah. it's taking time to shoot the movie, but also just because they need them for different behaviors, That's right? right. So. So, <laughs> I love it. And then they went from the little puppy aspect to when it's big, and then, of course, as you know, uh, inevitably there is uh, a death in the family as it were mm -hmm. and that's where the lump in the throat comes yeah. from but it was uh, but again another good family delightful movie. delightful film very well mm -hmm. and the book was good as well mm -hmm. I'd say read the book too okay it was a very very good one first, maybe. all right let's go to a documentary uh, from Disney and this is uh, they've just started doing this once again uh, the uh, natural history series they did years ago oh. Disney did but now they've started up again and all in 3d and everything the first of this was Earth, and it mm -hmm. told the story of uh, an elephant family, mm -hmm. a whale family, and I'm trying to remember what else was in it. I know, I'm trying to think too right now. Oh, polar bear. Polar bears, that's right. And because, yeah. the problems they were having because of the crisis that we're experiencing we're in, environmentally mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the, uh, the climate change and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. photography and the camera well, work. Well, that's the thing. With movies like this, it's the cinematography behind it that is just... Amazing. Beautiful. And it's hard to believe sometimes that this is, this is real live nature. And not watching. staged. Right. And can you imagine the the patience of the crew yeah. and the camera people mm -hmm. and the director, everybody that's, that's waiting for that shot mm -hmm. and how much they shot and oh. then put it all together. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one is worth seeing for the whole family. Yeah, uh, definitely family it's, movie. It's educational and it's, it's emotional. Yeah. But, uh, but also kind of tunes us into what's going on in the world too. And right? it's showing that I think the creatures, God's creatures, are uh, respecting the environment more than we as humans yeah. are, ah, the way point. things are going out. Good. good point. I go to another film I thought I'd pick up on that I like very, very much, a Canadian film that did not show very well. It did get a lot of positive buzz. New York Times raved about it. It was called One Week. Uh, oh, yes. Joshua Jackson, mm -hmm. he's uh, an actor from um, Vancouver, and he's been on Canadian television series. Mm -hmm. And he learns that he has terminal cancer and he's got very short time to live. He's on the verge of getting married, but he then gives up everything, gets on a motorcycle, and travels right across Canada in one week's time. 
hitting all of the high spots that we're familiar with in the but tourist again, brochures, right? Well, that's right? the thing. It's almost, it's almost like a movie for tourism Canada. That's right. But that's what it, I doesn't, it doesn't create that feeling. It's not, it's, it's not like that. It's, it's just such a great approach to a movie. And because he's just a young guy and it can happen to anyone, it really, uh, it really actually does stir the emotions, this one, that's for And sure. in, in each spot that he stops, mm -hmm. he gets into some sort of an adventure. Right. And it enlightens him to come to grips with, with the problem that he's having, having yeah. to face this uh, terminal problem. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. thought it was a very fine film. I've yes. watched it two or three times. I have so as well. I'm, and uh, I'm, I'm just sorry that it, it didn't get more attention. So that's I what know. I'm saying, that we should uh, yeah. enjoy that on, enjoy a, on a cold winter's night. Yeah, that's a good one. There. All right, very good. Now, well, let's go to something I think everybody enjoys, and that's an animated film. And I'm thinking the most recent one that caused a lot of attention was Up, yes. about the old man voiced by Ed Asner, mm -hmm. and this uh, chubby young kid uh, who go on this wild adventure to South America. But what's amazing about this film, and I was choked up in it, in an animated film outside of Bambi, when you know what happened, <laughs> you just don't get choked up. But in this one you do, because it's a love story right. of this old man who loses his wife, and he fulfills an adventure he had promised her on their wedding day. Oh. And that never did happen. See, I but he takes the young one, kid so... with him, and they get into all oh. these adventures to South America to see this major falls. And, it, and how they do that, he's, got all, he's a balloon salesman. Right. And he ties balloon. all these balloons to his house, and the house floats across to South America. Did you hear that just uh, recently, Disney actually just sold that house. And oh, an actual real family bought the house. <laughs> and the house is super cool because it's multicolored and it's very Isn't neat inside. Amazing? And yeah. so Disney actually sold the house to a regular family. So it, uh, you know, that's, that's again a great family movie, but adults, children alike can enjoy. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a whole cross section there. I, I like the premise of this whole thing very much. Sure. I when I first was going to say that a house being carted along on balloons, no, mm -hmm. but then it, it, it really works that mm -hmm. way. Okay, so let's, well, um, let's maybe just mention the last few that okay, you really liked. Okay, Singing in the Rain, I had to bring that up. Go. That's representative of all the MGM musicals, the yep. highlight of uh, that story past in uh, mm -hmm. Hollywood history. Uh, with uh, Gene Kelly and uh, all of those people that were involved, yeah. Donald O'Connor and uh, Debbie Reynolds mm -hmm. and whatnot. Great Again, film. a good classic and movie. One scene where he's dancing in the rain with, with the umbrella. How many times that's been uh, used over and over and oh, reenacted in many it ways, many, right? Many, many times. Yeah, absolutely. So, and another one is E.T. How could you not leave E.T. off the off the list? Yes. You know, as yep. a, as e. a, a great a movie. I loved that as a kid, and I would watch it again. And tonight. that one was emotional. Yeah. Ice Age, that was a lot of fun, especially with Scrat, mm -hmm. that funny little with the, with, the, with the acorn and whatnot. Very good. Well, so. Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. We great really to be appreciate here. it. I appreciate Again, it. Again, a really great list of uh, all the movies you can watch. Again, by yourself if you want to, because that's a good thing about being at home. It doesn't matter. You can be by yourself watching these movies that's right. or with an entire family. <laughs> Enjoy. And uh, coming up after this uh, break, we're going to talk about a cozy meal that you can have that you can maybe sit around the couch with a big bowl and a crusty piece of bread and watch some of these movies that Alex suggested. We'll be right back with more Tara at Home. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We are on location here mid-January. We're at Stir Kitchen Store on Brant Street in Burlington. They're letting us use their lovely kitchen. And mm -hmm. we're back with our Chef Rachel. We're going along with the comfy, cozy, staying indoors theme today yes. on the show. It's the time of year everybody kind of just stays indoors and likes to cook a real comforting meal. We mm -hmm. do a lot of that this time of year, right? Yeah. It helps yep. us fatten us up a little bit. But uh, <laughs> we're cooking a real good classic dish today. Tell us about it. Okay, today we're doing a beef bourguignon. So it's a mm. classical French stew. Um, really good. Mm -hmm. We've started. Uh, we've started cooking already, just because it, it's a long process sure. to make a to make a good stew. So we have cooked bacon. Which Wait, we did so first. We started with that. Um, a little bit of oil and butter in your pan. 
um, mm -hmm. and just cook the bacon. Now these are called bacon lardons. Okay. Okay, so they're just strips of bacon basically. Okay. So yeah, you get the whole strip and then you want to cut it down um, vertically to make uh, batons or... Okay, sure. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's all ready. In the same pan, so transfer that to a plate. Mm -hmm. In the same pan with the same fat, we want to cook our meat. Okay, that so this is some nice flavor too, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, all that fat in there. So this is um, a sirloin roast. And basically, I just cubed it up. You want to uh, trim it if it's uh, if, it, if there's a lot of fat, trim yes. the fat off. Um, you can leave a bit because that obviously gives flavor, but um, you don't want it too fatty. And you also want to get rid of the silver skin as well. So that's kind of the um, well, the that, little like bit that of membrane almost, right? That's in the right. Yeah. yeah, and it actually looks silver, so you'll know what it is. You want to okay. take that off because that won't break down when you're cooking. Okay, so it'll stay tough, and you don't want that. Okay. So you want to get as much of that off as you can. So we basically just want to brown this on all sides. Mm -hmm. uh, these cubes, we, they don't need to be cooked all the way through because it's going to simmer in the oven for a long time. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so we just want to make sure this is all brown. So maybe another 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Um, and then we'll transfer that over to the big plate right. there. That plate. Um, and then we have mm -hmm. a lot of other ingredients here that we're going to add. We have some carrots and onions. Mm -hmm. That'll build a lot of flavor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to add that into the to the pan with some garlic and we've got some um, red wine and stock that's going to be the base of the sauce. Yep. So um, so it takes a little a little bit of time to prepare but well worth it. Yeah absolutely and then again this is one of those I, I think sometimes people fear beef bourguignon they're afraid that it's something so intricate and big. Mm -hmm. Sure it takes some time but it's really just basic ingredients right? Right. Um, and once you make it it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay so we're going to get that all onto there. Right. And so then you're going to, at this point, um, are you going to use this pan again? Yes. Okay, with all these this flavoring in there. Right, we are going to get rid of some of this because okay. the, um, there is a lot of fat in there now and, yeah. uh, and juice. Sure. So we do want to get rid of uh, most of it, but we can leave a touch in there. Okay. Um, I think a good thing too about this meat is a lot of times if you go to your butcher or local store meat department, they will, you can actually buy the meat already chunked up for you, so right. it saves another step mm -hmm. as well, which is kind of nice. Of course. So then yep. cooking time will depend on the kind of meat that you get. Mm -hmm. um, if you get a, a little bit of a more tender cut, it won't take quite as long. But sure. um, this dish is anywhere from probably two to three hours to cook, depending okay. on the meat that you okay. have. Um, but it's, you know, if it's cold and wintry outside and snowy, you just stay inside and you cook all afternoon. And yeah, exactly. And it's kind of fun, right? Exactly. People okay. come home to the great aromas of this, so mm -hmm. that's kind of nice. Okay, right, so, so like I said, we're going to pour most of this out. I'll just pour it into... Um, this little dish here and we can okay. get rid of it. There's nothing that we can really do with this yeah. at the moment. Or we can add it back into our sauce after. Sure. Um, but we'll leave a touch little for the veggies. Of with that. Just okay. some liquid for the vegetables. Okay, so back okay. onto high. And then uh, this is just one carrot that I've sliced up. Mm -hmm. So we'll add that in. So I noticed you slice them pretty thinly. So sometimes I notice, you know, in stews, they're big chunks. Yeah. But this will help probably cook at a better pace. Right. Now this is like, yeah, it's not, you don't want it too thin, but yeah, you don't yeah. want it also too chunky either because we're actually going to keep um, the carrots and the onions in the dish. Okay. Um, in this case, sometimes you do take them out and um, in that instance, you can make them big chunks and they don't have to be uniform, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but in this case, we are going to eat them, so not too thin, but not too thick either. Okay. And one whole onion sliced up. Right. Um, so this doesn't take long to cook. These, we just want to get uh, a little browned and softened up a bit. Um, but to this, we will add in, uh, what are we going to add into here? A little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. And some that. garlic that I have chopped up. Okay. Okay, so break up all the onions there. Just thinly sliced. Now with um, the stock that you're going to add at some point, uh, what kind of stock are you using? Beef stock? Beef stock. Okay. Yep. So I guess you could get away with using a vegetable stock if you wanted to, or a chicken stock, but the beef is what's really going to intensify the flavors of beef. Exactly. Since that's what it is, right? Exactly. Yeah, if you don't have beef stock on hand and you want to use a different kind, for sure. It's okay, um, but... Yeah. But yeah, the, the beef stock will definitely give it a little bit more flavor. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll move that to the side and we'll add in right. the garlic at this time. Um, yeah, and then, so once these vegetables are nicely browned and slightly softened, mm -hmm. uh, we can add our other ingredients back in. Okay. So we'll do that now. We'll so add let's in... Let's do um, that. Yep. So, magic the of beef. television, we'll just keep this moving along. <laughs> yep, so the beef and, and its juices, that's fine there, so we'll put that back in. Mm -hmm. We're going to add the bacon back in at this point as well? Of course, yeah. Okay. Go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Great. This is coming together. Oh, sorry. 
So mix this all together and then at this point, um, I like to add a little bit of flour. Okay. So about two tablespoons of flour. We'll just sprinkle it over the beef. It'll give the beef a, a nice little coating and it will also help uh, with the thickening of the sauce sure. once it goes in the oven. So, so you don't need to make stir. that paste ahead of time and, and add it. You can just sprinkle it and it's yeah, okay. Yeah, I just sprinkle it right on. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Getting there. Yeah. So this is looking good. The beef's nice and browned. Mm -hmm. Everything's mixing together well. Now at this point, we'll add in um, our liquid. Okay. So about two to three cups of stock. Mm-hmm. Because you can kind of get a feel for it. the amount of meat that you've added and the vegetables, just sort of what you need, right? Mm-hmm. And again, you can always thicken it up more in the end, right? Right. Yep. You can adjust the consistency at the end. Okay. Uh, a full bottle of wine. Full bottle of wine, folks. Full <laughs> bottle of red wine. <laughs> now, again, when it comes to the wine, are you kind of picky choosy what you're picking um, in terms of flavors? Yeah. Do you want something full bodied? Okay. Uh, for this to give it a lot of flavor, so I think I knew um, there was a full bottle of wine in beef organo, mm, but that's what mm. gives it that real rich like. Oh yeah, Ugh. it's a great sauce. Yeah, right. so I'm using a Bordeaux. Okay, um, and, th and that is a French wine, but if you uh, you could also use a Chianti, which is a Italian wine, sure. but that's a nice one as well. Okay, all right. Okay. We're gonna do. We're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be back, and we're gonna finish this up and uh, give you a better idea of how this all comes together. Full bottle. Be right back. <laughs> Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Rachel and we're talking about comfort foods, mm -hmm. particularly beef bourguignon. Yes. And uh, we, we're going to just let you take it here because there are a lot of steps to this. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we left off, uh, we added we added the stock and the wine to the pan. Mm -hmm. um, we want to start to bring that up to a boil. We also put in some rosemary sprigs and about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Right. So that, that was it. Um, bring it up to a boil, put it in the oven. Uh, 325 degrees for about two to three hours. Keep your eye on it. Check it after two hours. Once the meat's nice and tender, it's ready. Okay. Comes out of the oven. You want to strain it. So over over a pot, strain the meat into a um, you know into into a strainer or a colander. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm the meat and vegetables, and then you have just your liquid in the pot. You can pick out the stems of, um, of your herbs, okay? So we have the meat, we've put it into a clean new pot. So basically you're left with this after you strain. Right, Okay. just the meat and vegetables. Okay. Uh, and then we had the sauce, we've done this already. Uh, we had the sauce in the pot, there'll be a layer of fat on the top, so you wanna skim that off, either with a ladle, or I find that a paper towel works really good. Oh yeah, I've heard of doing So that. just okay. some paper towel on top, you can see the fat coming right off. So you wanna get uh, rid of as much of the fat as you can. Okay, now bring that to a boil and let it, uh, it kind of simmer until it reduces. So we're left with uh, a sauce, you can see, I'll use the spatula, it kind of coats the mm -hmm. spatula so it's nice and thick. Okay. That's the magic of all of this. In the meantime, we sauteed in, in butter some pearl onions and mushrooms. Okay. So just until they're browned. Add okay, those. so we're gonna add these on top of the meat and then put the sauce on top of that and we're ready to serve. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, good. So of course we've done the condensed version of this, so you can go on to terragreenhouses.com to get all of Chef Rachel's recipes, including this one. And again, this will carry you right through the winter, so it works out perfectly. And again, we want to thank Stir Kitchens here in Burlington for letting us use their kitchen today and uh, enjoy and uh, mm, cozy and comfy. There we're good go. to go. That's it. Beautiful. That's it for Terra at Home for today. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. 